Hello and welcome to my retro watches. If you're new to the channel, my name is Mike. Now today we're going Swiss. We've got this lovely Tissot watch on the bench. And um, well, this Tissot hides a little secret. And some of you may know this already because you would be familiar with the word auto lube. But if you didn't, what would that mean? Automatic lubrication, perhaps? Well, the concept of this watch was uh, thought about in 1952 by the boffins at Tissot. They wanted to design a watch that didn't need any lubrication and not that many moving parts. And fast forward to 1971, they released the Tissot Auto Lube and here it is. And what is inside this? Well, what's so significant about it and what's so fantastic and weird about it is that most of the working parts in this movement are plastic. There isn't a screw inside there and it's only got the keyless, the barrel and of course the hairspring and the balance that are made out of metal. Everything else is plastic. Fantastic. Now, that seems a bit strange, doesn't it? It's sort of a bit of horological history, I think. You know, they were thinking out the box. So this watch has only got 52 parts, whereas a normal mechanical watch at the time would have had about 91. So less moving parts, less problems. This watch was also sealed, so you didn't need to oil it, you didn't need to service it. They actually claimed that it was supposed to reach chronometer standards of accuracy, but that will remain to be seen. However, the actual idea was a bit of a flop. The public didn't warm to it. I don't think they marketed it very well at the time either. Uh, you know, even in today's world, would you buy a plastic mechanical watch? Or well, maybe, because Swatch, of course, made the System 51. And that really is just the... Uh, well, the follow-on from this, isn't it, really? The, the System 51 had 51 parts. This had 52. So Tissot were there first. And a Tissot owned by the Swatch Group? I think they might be. So there we go. That's the similarities. So what we're going to do... Well, I bought this one. I've actually got a similar one that I've repaired before. Now, in principle, you can't service these watches. So there's no way to take them apart. But certain little bits do come off. And this one, if... I try to wind it, it's on full wind, as you can see there, it tries to run just for a little bit. So it tells me that possibly I can fix it. And what we're gonna do, put it on the microscope first of all, have a look at it nice and close up. There's a few parts I can take off this that I know from experience, and I'm hoping by doing that, we might be able to get it to work again. So out comes the microscope and out comes the macro lens and let's change to a different perspective. So here we are nice and close up and you get to see all that plastic in all of its glory. And you can see like here, for instance, it's just plastic welded. So everything, that's a pivot. Uh, this is the barrel. Now, this to me is a bit of a telltale sign as this is why I'm sort of semi hopeful that I can perhaps repair this. There's a lot of dirt, a lot of debris, but what there also is, that's the keyless, uh, is quite a bit of oil. You can see all this gunk here, look. And I am surmising, well look at that, it's pretty evident there, it's very wet that somebody's tried to repair this by just putting oil all over the place and oil isn't going to make any difference on these. This is what also fascinates me. This under there is the balance and that's shock protection. And it's not a jewel, it's also plastic. That little star there is actually the regulator as well. So I said that it's a sealed unit and apparently it is, but it isn't look because there's a few little access holes here and there. As I say, this is to get into the keyless works. Uh, is that another hole there? I'm not sure. Well, there's part of, these are part of the plastic weld bits. No, I don't know actually. That feels like I can touch that wheel. So it's not completely foolproof, is it? Let's face it. Uh, but what's pretty cool is I can go into this access hole here and I can try and nudge this escape. And you can see it is trying to go. 
and it is on full power as well. So the, the, the mainspring's got every single bit of wind in it possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the parts that I can um, in the aid of trying to get to this balance because I am wondering whether perhaps the balance itself has got some oil on it and it's all stuck together because when I have got it working of course this is the worst camera angle to try and see this now and it's now not going to do it of course but I've had this running for a little while before only like a couple of minutes and it ran really 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 fast which is indicative of a stuck hairspring so let's get out the, uh, the camera and take it apart Okay, right, so to get into this movement, first of all, it's got a split stem. So what's a split stem? Well, basically, the stem is attached to the crown, as we might know, and it won't come out by pressing a button. There's nothing you can press. All you've got to do is pull, and you'll separate one from the other. Now, on quite a few of them, they can be particularly stiff, but this one's not too bad. And... It has a female end inside, and if I can get it on the camera, there's a sort of male end on that side. And then obviously to put it back in, we just put it in with some brute force. So that is that out. Now what we've got to do is get the movement out of the case. And that should be a little bit easier. And there we have it. So what I will now do actually, now it's out, I will put the stem back on, so at least we can try and operate some parts of the mechanism so I can take the hands off. Okay, crown kind of back on, and I can just line the hands up in order to remove. actually quite interesting look at the, uh, the length of that pivot on that second hand <laughs> amazing and with that off just need to figure out how to take the doll off I'm assuming it's going to be a friction fit because they say there's no screws in this movement. And what is actually being removed is this plastic shroud. So definitely hit a bit of a snag right now. Um, as far as I was concerned, the dial would friction fit, but that there looks to me like glue that somebody else has put on. I can't believe for one moment it's left the factory like that. Now I have done a similar watch to this before with this movement and the dial came straight off. And when I try to pull and pry anywhere else, it seems it like it wants to move, but it's all hanging on that dodgy bit there hopefully that's coming out on camera so I'm gonna to have to do a little bit of um, brute force see if I can break that um, glue without causing too much damage bit of a nightmare to start with I have to say it's really tempting to put acetone on there but I do worry being so close to the dial and there's a date ring as well that if anything ran into that it would probably strip off the paint. You can just see there possibly a little bit of give but and then a little bit of give on this side now it just cracked. Hopefully that's just the glue letting go. So 
So now you can see that it's trying to separate but I think that little nodule there is not going to let go. Yeah, to me that's already bent. Oh. Well, I've told you before many times for the regulars that I am just an amateur hobbyist and um, things don't always go to plan. <laughs> so what am I going to do here? Do I just snap that off and deal with it? Or do I try now to get just a little bit of acetate on there? See if I can soften it. I think I'm going to try that. So the doll has finally come off and not how I wanted it really and you can see here over at the 17 that this has had a real botch uh, attempt at some repair and what has happened is the actual date disc here is glued solid. Um, that could even be why the watch isn't running, I'm not too sure at this stage. The plan was originally to get the date wheel off. This plastic piece here I think comes off and you can get to the balance. But what am I going to do here? It's like the watch is already ruined before I can even try to repair it. I have no real idea other than prying gently as I am now how I'm going to free that up without any damage. It's, um, well, you live and die by the sword. This watch, I think, only cost me £25, something like that. I mean, ironically, when they are fully working, they seem to be on eBay for over £100. So, if you can get it working, <laughs> it's uh, then worth something, isn't it? So, I'll have to just persevere, try and do some prying and some praying, and see at least if I can free that up. Uh, failing that I might just have to try and see if I can force this piece up at least to get in there clearly there's a chip here and I think that's what somebody else has tried to do also so never mind uh, we'll soldier on a watch does not beat me Just why would you do this? To, why? <laughs> oh. 
Well, that was interesting. Didn't expect that to happen. But it's intact. It's also, it's also glued here. I think. Yep. Oh, I think I'm off camera. Sorry about that, guys. We've got two parts that are completely glued. <laughs> okay, I'll keep persevering. You must all think I'm mad. There's probably some really easy way to do this. One of you guys will say in the comments. That would have saved me half an hour of pain and torture. Just seems so much more stuck down this side. Getting particularly worried around the two here. Keep thinking it's going to break. Oh, this is so annoying. Definitely cracked around the two. Damn it. It comes off in one whole piece where with the teeth. It'll be okay. But it's really looking dodgy. It's off. Possible I could use it again. But it's left all of this glue and part of that date ring with it, which is a real, real, real shame. Um, okay, well, let's just soldier on. I think the main thing now is to see if we could actually get it to go or whether even that glue's seeped onto some of the parts and that's now why it doesn't run. Although when it runs a few seconds, it must be must be able to turn, surely. So this is the balance cock or the balance bridge. And again, I'm just doing this from memory from the one I've looked at before, that these should pry off. It's just remembering where the pry point is. There. There we have one balance, which actually looks okay, doesn't it? It 
interesting. I'm not entirely sure you can remove it completely. Just hampered by all of that as well. I was hoping to see loads and loads of oil. I'm just gonna have a quick look on my microscope. If I see it, I'll put it on the other microscope. Okay, so I've had a look on my stereoscope. Now we're back on the digital microscope because I've seen something. So if you look at those coils, first glance, they look okay. But then you start seeing that they are actually touching in places. And it's always a bit alien for me to try and use this scope. So we're looking at the coils here. Now, if I just nudge them with this oiler, just notice the oil is quite dirty. Hang on. To me, that looks like magnetism. I can't for the life of me, I'm expecting to see oil. And sometimes like I look at those little bits there and I think, is that oil? But it normally sheens. That to me, I think might be magnetism. I cannot remove the balance in its entirety. I guess I possibly could. It's quite interesting. You can see this red thing here. That's the regulator that we saw on the top of the movement. And it just goes along with this rack here. And there's also a regulator arm here if you so choose to use that. Now the thing is, the stud, which is this bit here, the end of the uh, hairspring, seems to be plugged into that. And I think that's plastic welded or it's going to be glued in there. And I don't want to mess with that. Don't worry about that. That's not a hair. That's actually part of the plastic. Um, so I'm going to put on the demagnetizer first, see if that makes any difference. Uh, failing that, I'm just going to have to brush some solvent onto it and uh, see if I can clear it that way. So, let's get the demagnetizer. So for this shot, you see the desk in all of its mess. I've had to move everything out of the way. This is the little cheap demagnetizer I use. Now I've had to put the balance uh, cock back on. Um, and I'm just going to attempt it. Now all you do with this is you press the, the button, a little light comes on and you draw the object away let go and you want to do this quite a few times usually drawing it higher i'm trying to record this on my mobile phone and i'm crashing into it so i need to go past it really and now i'm going to try to do it this way without anything falling out And you get my picture. Now I'll do that a few more times and um, see if we can get it going. So we're back on the microscope once more and I can definitely confirm that it uh, didn't demagnetize. So I'm now tempted to think that it must be uh, oil. So I've got some essence of Renata, which is a type of thinner. You can buy this in the UK. Hairspring degreaser actually. And the only thing I've got is a brush. It's whether I can get the brush in to get it on the spring. In actual fact, looks like I need a thinner brush. Now the joy of this stuff is it does evaporate. I just want to be sure I get plenty inside there. Hopefully it doesn't ruin anything else, but I shouldn't do. To be honest, this stuff is brilliant. 
But all I'll be concerned about is little bits of debris like that. Uh, we can then just try and use a blower. That will eventually get rid of that. So I'm going to do a couple more rounds of this actually just to be 100% sure. And then we'll put the, uh, the cock bat on and see if it's going to go. Okay, so that's all been cleaned and dried and it looks a lot better. Uh, now, if I do the oil test again, as you can see, it's not sticking anymore. So it's clearly was oil. So need to put the bridge back on. See if this thing is gonna run. Uh, <laughs> let's hope it does. That's all I'm gonna say. Okay, let's put the bridge on. Should be straightforward enough on these two posts. Need my little bit of pegwood. And then what these have got as well, hopefully you can see this, these two little brass rings, they just secure the post. Now what is alarming me a little bit, or a lot should we say, is, oops, that is a complete disaster. Oh dear, so we've got one brass ring there, and the other one has gone walkabout, so I'm gonna have to try and track that down. That is not what you do guys, you make sure your movement holder is tight first. Brass rings retrieved, be a little bit more careful. I'm in a different movement holder now as well to be fair, um, than I was at the beginning of this video. It holds it better. So these, anyway, they just sit around that plastic post and I guess they just give it a bit more of a friction fit. And being brass, of course, not magnetic. So when they go flying on the floor like they've just done, I've got to get on my hands and knees and I've got to find those with my eyes and not a magnet, which is normally what I'm using. So I know the watch is still maxed out on wine and it isn't running at all. And that balance, well, it, it seems to be okay. Spinning in both directions. I'm thinking something's probably jammed in the train, if I'm honest. I'm gonna just flip it over. What I wanted to observe really is that pallet fork. Just to make sure that I've not overbanked it. So if I give that a nudge, I'll be looking for it to, it's really difficult to do. Looking for it to move in both directions. This is very crude. And there it is. So it's a bit alarming. And I've just noticed something else. Look at this big like, dark patch in there. Ooh. I'm going to zoom in on that for you guys to see. That is oil inside. Yeah, definitely, definitely working properly. So what is jamming it? That is a good question. Because I don't know. Right. Let's turn it over. So all we can do, I'm gonna remove the hour wheel, I think, and see what we can see underneath all of this lot. See if there's anything we're missing. It's the only bit we've not removed and that's the bit that we can remove. Now I know this little part 
is on a spring. That's easy enough to get out actually. See this here? It's a little lever. Uh, then we've got that, which I guess is the date corrector. And the hour wheel. And I keep on seeing little bits of movements. There's something. There's something in there. Come on. Got a bit of a tight cannon pinion. Oh no. I stand corrected. That feels a bit I don't want to damage the teeth, but that wheel there is absolutely solid. And that surely that shouldn't be solid. What is that? That's on top of the it's on top of the barrel. Um, but I guess it's got it's all to do with the hands, isn't it? So it's um you've got the hour wheel. It must be some sort of weird minute wheel. Again, more oil. Can you see all that dark shadow there? So I'd been contemplating doing what I did with the Timex that some of those old Timex, I did a video on it a while ago. You can't really take them apart and service them, so you just dip the whole thing in uh, alcohol or something and clean them that way. So maybe that's what I should do here. Just dump the whole thing in Renata. But why is that wheel so so stiff? Stick it back on the microscope, have a closer look. Now then that's the post for the wheel and this is the thing that's uh, really really jammed my god it is ah there we have it that's is that the problem well it's definitely a problem look you can see this is the winding pinion for when you wind the barrel god, so is this what this is is this the ratchet that winds the no it isn't is it well, it's, when you wind the watch, obviously it's winding the barrel, you can see the metal teeth at the bottom, whatever this one is on top, the plastic one, all the teeth are gone. So is that what's stopping it? Is it stopped on all of that lot? I mean, it, might, it sounds pretty obvious, doesn't it? Because there's no power going into the train. How on earth am I going to... I suppose you can't make it any worse, can you? That's... That's the thing. Can I get in there? That screwdriver's far too big. Even this one's too big. Oh, look at all the oil as well. The thing is, that's not touching that bone. It must, it must be chewed up on something, surely. And how do I move it? Oops. See, this is all plastic. This is a plastic cover over the top of it. So, well, not here. Actually, this is part of the wheel. Yeah, I'm wondering whether it's jammed. Uh. Right, I know what I can do, which is let the power down on the mainspring, and that's on the other side. I can't actually film that, so let me do that, and uh, we'll see if that's just loosened it up. Maybe it's just all tensioned from the mainspring. Okay, we now have no power, so no excuses. Okay, see now that is. It is now movable, isn't it? And it 
it's gone past the jamlet. I should have gone the opposite direction to get the jam over this side. Let's do that. Yeah, it's really stiff there. There, right, okay. So that is a complete and utter catastrophe. But let's let's put some power in it now. Now it's past that and it's freed. Maybe it will go. You can see that all the train wheels are moving, look. Right, okay, let me wind it up. Well, I've wound it up and I'm getting nothing. Absolutely nothing at all, which is a real shame. Every now and again it tries to have a bit of a, a bit of a beat. So hoping that that was the problem, this really chewed up teeth. Well I suppose it still could be, maybe there's a bit of that stuck somewhere, I don't know. I'm only going to make it worse. The thing is this watch is scrap now. I can't change that wheel because I can't get in. So this will be the first time really on my retro watches that I've had a failure, that I'm not being able to fix the problem. And that's what Plastic Fantastic is. Ruins everything for you, doesn't it? Let me get really close in on that. Yeah, they're, they're really beyond repair. However, it's let's do the test anyway. I'm gonna dunk it in some Renata I'm going to stick it in the ultrasonic and uh, give it a good rattle around in there. It's going to take ages to dry out. But if there is just, you know, a bit of that plastic stuck somewhere or all that oil's playing a, you know, havoc inside somewhere. There's not many moving moving parts, as we know. Maybe even that glue's got something to do with it up there. Look on that little wheel. You can just see underneath there. Although... That's something I never checked, is it, really? I can't tell. That's it. Oh, I've just broken another tooth, look. Oh. <laughs> what a crap video this is. To be fair, I was filming a Zodiac, uh, sorry, a Zenith for this next video, and I'm just halfway through that at the moment. I've got a few problems that I need to iron out. That's why I jumped onto this one. Right, let's get the uh, Renata out. Half a Renata. And uh, let's just drop it in. I think it should be okay. It'll certainly get rid of all the oil, and you never know. Let's try and get it in focus. It might just do the trick. I'm determined to see it run and then at least I feel that I've not been beaten or duped because whoever sold me this watch on eBay should be ashamed of themselves. They've clearly botched it uh, just to get rid of it and um, make me pay 20 odd pounds for nothing. For a bit of entertainment for you guys I suppose so it's worth it. Well here we are after cleaning. Sadly the watch isn't running and this one has 100% beaten me and I'll tell you why in a moment but let's just have a quick look certainly if any of you have got one of these that cleaning trick works an absolute treat um, certainly with the essence of Renata because it evaporates quite quickly you know we had a lot of oil under here and there is no oil left anywhere now and all of these pivots which were really gunked up and horrible are all nice and clean we can flip it over to the other side and again, you can still see some debris underneath here, but it sort of shook it to where you can almost pick it out if uh, you so choose. Um, however, what has gone wrong? Well, it wasn't running after cleaning and uh, I started to have a look at it off camera and started to think, if I just turn it back over, that these basically are the pivots and 
I kept on looking at them and I kept on thinking there's something different certainly maybe with the escape here or the pallet fork because a lot of them seem to be quite flush to the top of the plastic here and then one of the, I think it was this one in particular it was quite low um, so I thought well maybe I can adjust those clearly there's something locking it in the train here and I can't see it I spent ages trying to see if I could see anything obvious like another tooth broken or a bit of debris um, so I tried to press this a little bit and I give it a bit of a push and what happens it came out the other side and um, as soon as it did that the whole spring it was fully wound unwound really really quickly all the way through the train the wheels whizzed around so clearly the jam was either the escape or even the, the pallet fork I guess we'll never really know um, now I've managed to find the little part a little metal stud that came out of that and I did contemplate trying to get it back in you can possibly just see there's a little hole there um, however let's bring it into shot We've got a bit of dazzle there, haven't we? Let's just try and correct that. Okay, so there. Hopefully you can see. Let's get real close. So this is the underside. So this is the side that was um, in contact with the plastic wheel. And you can see, look, that pip in the middle, I think, is a separate part. And I think perhaps that is a pin that runs through this into that plastic wheel uh, because if you turn it over like all the others are facing upwards the light is really poor isn't it there we go look you can see it's just a dish so clearly I now can't turn it back over clearly the other side is definitely right so my quandary really is that pin doesn't look anywhere near long enough to have held into the um, escape wheel the escape wheel See if I can just bring it back in again. It's very hard to focus in there. Harder than I thought, actually. So just in the centre there. I don't think there's enough to grip. I might try and push it in, just for the sake of it. Uh, but I don't want to waste your time. I'm conscious this video is going to have been very long. And it's a fail and I've never had a fail before on the channel I've actually filmed videos before that have failed completely and never wanted to publish them I kind of have this feeling that who would want to watch a video that goes on for over half an hour to see a complete epic fail at the end of it certainly now by my own hands uh, but hey that's watchmaking and I figured this is also still a valuable lesson some of you may argue what the hell are you doing trying to mess around with an unserviceable plastic movement and you're quite right but I like to bring anything to this channel that uh, looks a little bit more interesting so talking of looking at interesting why not show you certainly one under the microscope first my working one so you get to see how this thing is there we go so look at that I think it's actually really really cool it is a bit lego isn't it let's face it um so this one is a lanco i'll show you the dial on a on an outer shot uh, shortly and it's the same movement the 2270 interestingly it says there it's got one jewel so i've been pondering over where the jewel might be and my conclusion has to be that it's the impulse jewel on the the balance uh, perhaps uh, having a ruby is easier on the plastic than a piece of metal would be i don't know i can't see anywhere else where it would possibly be but look you can see it working and i think that's like i say quite interesting these are obviously a blast from the past a moment in history in, in watchmaking where somebody tried to think out the box a little bit differently and sadly it backfired um but hey and also you know what can i say about this ebay seller i mean what did he do to me somebody's I think deliberately stitched me up there they've they've been inside it they haven't been able to fix it they've made a hash of it glued everything back together again and put it on ebay to try and get some money back 
and uh, fair enough um you win some you lose some to be honest i am now going to be looking for another one of these movements uh, or one of these watches that is also broken and hopefully no one's been inside it because i do believe that the method of ultrasonic cleaning uh with some fluids might just do the trick because the only way they'd stop really is if there's a damage to the wheels or there's debris still got in there somehow so i'm dying to try that out so maybe in the future in the next year or two you might see another video a more successful video <laughs> right so let's turn the watch over you can see the dial for this one and we'll finish the video off so here's the dial of the lanco and as you can see it's a nice fading gray dial it's in a chrome plated case so it's pretty worn and pretty battered now i bought this at the watch fair for i think about 10 pounds actually for exactly the same reason i was interested to see if i could get that plastic fantastic movement going and on this one i did um hence the reason buying the tso to show you guys and make you aware of what's out there really uh anything goes on this channel clearly and i'm still really sorry this video is a complete failure so uh stay tuned though because the next video is going to be a zenith i've been working on that one for a couple of weeks now i've uh, cleaned all the components just got to rebuild the movement it's a high beat movement it's a really nice looking watch and i think most of you are going to be much happier watching uh, me work on that one than you were <laughs> watching me do this one uh, as for the tso well funny enough i've still got to rebuild it because i didn't take any photos to do the thumbnail for this video so i'm gonna have to sort of cobble it back together again just for that reason so it's still biting me even now so look guys uh leave your comments below i'll read every single one of them if you want to support the channel please give the video a thumbs up that's all i ever ask it really really does help the channel um and subscribe if you're new and you liked what you saw because there's plenty more in the back catalog and there's plenty more to come as well uh, lastly join the facebook group retro and vintage watches and restorations there is a link below there's 11,200 members in there now across all the planet uh, everybody talking about watches watch repairs watch collecting new old everything anything goes in there it's a great community and if you've got um, problems with repairs that you're trying to do yourself perhaps it's a great place to get answers because we've got quite a few professionals in there who are very willing to offer any assistance uh, or advice for your problems you might encounter so that's it stay tuned like i say for the zenith that's coming very soon um if you want to see me you can also see me on my other channel which is my watch reviews where i'm reviewing some of my old watches in my collection and obviously some new watches too still trying to grow that channel need as much support as i possibly can so if you like what i'm doing please just pop over there and hit subscribe would you that would be really really kind of you again link below see you in the zenith video very very soon bye for now